Russia is set to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in its neighboring country, Belarus. President Vladimir Putin made this announcement as per Russian media reports. This will be the first time since the mid-1990s that Moscow would be stationing such arms outside of its territory. The announcement comes at a time when the rift with the West is growing over the Russia-Ukraine war, the war that does not seem to be ending. The Russian president said that the United States has been deploying their tactical nuclear weapons on the territory of their allied countries in Europe for decades now. He emphasized, we are just doing the same without violating our international obligations on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. Reacting to the announcement, Ukraine says that Russia is holding Minsk as a nuclear hostage. Ukrainian official added the move was a step towards the internal destabilization of Belarus. Александр Григорьевич прав, он говорит, ну слушайте, мы же ваши ближайшие союзники, почему американцы своим, своим союзникам делают, а на их территории размещают, учат, кстати говоря, их экипажи, их летчиков, используя при необходимости этот вид вооружения. Мы договорились, что мы сделаем то же самое, не нарушая своих обязательств, хочу это подчеркнуть. But what are these tactical nuclear weapons? These are nuclear weapons that are used for specific gains on the battlefield, rather than those with the capacity to wipe out entire cities. According to the announcement, the construction of a storage facility for such weapons in Belarus will be completed by July the 1st. Russia has stationed 10 aircraft in Belarus capable of carrying tactical nuclear weapons already. Putin added that Moscow had already transferred a number of Iskander tactical missile systems that can launch nuclear weapons to Minsk. Now remember, Belarus shares a border with three NATO countries, that is Poland, Lithuania and Latvia. The United States has reacted cautiously to the announcement. A senior U.S. official noted that Russia and Belarus have been in talks about such a deal over the past year. He added, however, there were no signs that Moscow planned to use its nuclear weapons. The international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons denounced the move and called it an extremely dangerous escalation. Although Putin said that Moscow would not actually be transferring control of the arms to Minsk, such a move must be seen in the backdrop of Russia suspending its observation of the New START treaty. This means that Moscow will not allow NATO countries to inspect its nuclear arsenal. Russia argues it would be inappropriate to allow inspections while the countries are in a standoff over Russia's war in Ukraine. It is the only remaining nuclear arms control treaty between the United States and Russia. The treaty limits stockpiling of strategic offensive arms, broadly nuclear warheads deployed by missiles, planes or even submarines. Questions are being asked as to what happens if Russia feels provoked. Will the world witness another nuclear attack? Is the threat of a nuclear war becoming too real? Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Glenn Grant, who is a security and defense expert in the Ukrainian Institute for the Future. Thank you for being with us. Now, Russia mm -hmm. is set to move nuclear-capable weapons to its neighbor, Belarus. What are these tactical nuclear weapons? And just how much of an escalation is this move by Russia? <clears throat> okay, I think you, you need to look at this in, in, in terms of military and political. Um, in, in the military case, I mean, th there is nothing new or, ex or exciting in this for anybody um, because R Russia has already got a huge capacity to fire nuclear weapons into the Baltic states. Remember that Russia also already borders Estonia and Latvia and Lithuania with Kaliningrad. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, going to Belarus doesn't add one tiny bit to their ability to fire nuclear. Also remember that they've got many long range nuclear weapons, both at sea in submarines that can fire smaller weapons and on the ground back inside Russia 
in the Black Sea, the missiles that can fire a long way. So, so in military terms, there is nothing new in this. In fact, it actually adds a problem for Russia, because now if they do move, um, say, Iskander missiles, um, firing a couple of hundred kilometers, then, then they've still got to guard them. They've got to guard them, they've got to manage them. Uh, and that in Belarus, that could be quite difficult. Mm -hmm. They've also got to guard them in air defense terms, which means that they've got to move at least an air defense regiment into Belarus to guard them, which is a regiment then that they have not got for somewhere else on the battlefield. So in military terms, this is a nonsense. Um, so you have to look at the political. Uh, and in political terms, why is Putin doing this? Because he's under pressure at home. He is not any longer being seen as the hard man. And if he's not being seen as the hard man, he has to start doing things to show that he is the hard man. And this is one of the few things that he can actually do. Right. Mm. Now, Glenn, Putin has defended his move by comparing it to the US having nukes stationed in various European countries, saying that it violates no non-proliferation treaty. What do you make of his remarks here? Um, well, I, again, this is political. I mean, remember that, that, that nobody in the US or anywhere else has moved any weapons since this war started. So everything that the US has had or UK or France uh, have got uh, has been in place since uh, before, the, before the major part of the war. So that means that effectively that it was also part of the treaty that Putin accepted previously. Um, so in, that, in, that, in those terms, I mean, we know that, that, that Russia doesn't want these treaties because it, it actually it, it allows the West to see not only where he's got his weapons, which, of course, they have to, but it also allows the West to see how bad many of these weapons are now, that they're actually they've deteriorated and they're really low quality and that they can't be used, uh, primarily his strategic weapons. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't want this uh, to be public knowledge. And so this is this is all part, again, of this political game of trying to push America, show he's strong. Um, I, personally, I don't think it changes in anything at all in terms of the threat or, or what he could do. If he's going to fire, he's going to fire anyway, and he's not going to talk to us about it. Mm. Right. So, Glenn, based on what you've said there, in your opinion, then, is the threat of nuclear war becoming too real? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's any different from it was a week ago. Um, uh, <clears throat> th th this is... Th th right. But Putin knows that if he goes nuclear, that he is going to be destroying Russia. But more than that, all his, uh, all his surrounding, uh, let's call them f circle of friends or circle of supporters, also know that their children who are in the West, who are in the Netherlands, who are in Britain, who are in France, will also be, be part of this problem and, and will die. And the whole of their futures are gone. So the last thing that anybody surrounding Putin wants right. is, is a nuclear war. And they will do their utmost to make sure that he doesn't become even more stupid than he is at the moment and, and actually, you know, press the button. Because that would actually end everything for everybody. And frankly, nobody wants that. Mm. Right. Absolutely. Glenn, thank you very much for your valued insights joining us on the show. Thank you. Okay. Good day. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.